Right, so next up is Martin, and Martin is going to talk about a tool called Pirate for ray tracing and image generation. Um, Martin is a professor of geoinformatics and computer graphics at the Institute of Geomatics Engineering at the University of Applied Sciences, Northwestern Switzerland. Uh, you may remember we had the conference there in Basel last year. So off you go, Martin. Please start your screen sharing and then... Excellent, it's all working perfectly. Yes, thank you for the introduction. I just had some technical difficulties, but <laughs> just solved it in time. Perfect. I hope you can see this full screen. Perfect, yeah, I moved this one too. Okay, I'm talking about Pirate, uh, computer graphics in Jupyter Notebooks, and the most important part for fun, and also a little bit for teaching. I'm actually teaching Python at the University of Applied Science and Arts, Northwestern Switzerland. If you uh, attended EuroPython last year and went to the workshops or the social event that was this building, I'm working and today I'm, I'm talking about a, a small side project I'm create, I started creating a couple years ago and still maintain it. Um, and it's basically most for fun to create such graphics we see here. Um, my my inspiration or motivation lies back in the in the early personal computers like here the commodore uh, 16 or 64 um, that's actually from the manual of this computer so it came out with this ugly basic code and you could uh, create um, graphics we saw in the previous talks uh, to talk um, also some some nice graphics um, and problem, of course, is always in Python, we don't have something built in to create that. I, I really want something I can create a couple lines of code and, and see something. That's my basic motivation. Of course, um, you could also create something for game development. That's not my focus at the moment. Um, I was in the game development industry uh, many years ago, but at the moment I'm not creating any games anymore. So I have two other things in mind. The first is the server-side graphics generation. I want to have a, a server um, that can create some, some uh, movies, for example, or animations. I also want um, it for teaching. For example, it's perfect to, to explain how loops work if you have some graphics. Or, um, of course, sorting algorithms, you can display um, how it works, etc. Also, it's nice to create some real-time content for streaming on Twitch, YouTube, or now Zoom, whatever. Um, I, I will show something like that later on. So there are many other modules doing the same thing. So I uh, don't really go into these. Just for reference, there are more of these. Um, for 2D graphics, we have many things. For example, Arcade is more for games. Pexel is for more for retro games. Kiwi is also for, for mobile applications. And then there are tons of GUI toolkits where you can create graphics too. Um, and of course, MoviePie where you can create movies out of still images. The same for 3D graphics. Um, there are some modules, of course, OpenGL um, would be uh, the biggest overkill. I said I want to create some graphics in a few lines of code. If I would start with OpenGL, I would end up with 200 lines of code just to draw a triangle. That's not really what I want to do at the moment. And um, of course, the GUI toolkits could do the same. Also, there are Blender Cinema 4D. You can script using Python. And that's all nice, but no, I want to reinvent the wheel. So I created Pirate. Um, it's on GitHub. You can download it. It's, it's a ray tracer and an image generator. You need at least Python 3.5. And I had some things in mind. This is what will come in future. It's not yet all um, working. So I, I want... Um, high quality ray tracing in a Jupyter notebook. I want to use it for teaching computer graphics and ray tracing concepts. I, I want to use these concepts to visualize geodata using, using Python, um, including some things like uh, oak trees, large point clouds, etc. And also I have focus on large 3D settled models. We actually 
used a modified version of Pirate already to render large 3D city models. I'm also not going into that at the moment. And um, also we can use OpenStreetMap data creating maps out of it. Um, if you're interested in it, you can contact me and I can show you how it was done. And of course, the server side rendering, that's, that's um, uh, one of the most important things. But of course, the last thing that I want to have fun programming graphics. So installation is quite easy. I don't have a Conda installation yet. I only have a pip installation. Um, you can also use Conda, of course, and use pip. And it has no dependencies. So you just install pirate, pip install pyrt. <laughs> and um, it, it would work without any modules, but I highly recommend to have NumPy and Pillow. If you don't have NumPy or Pillow, you can still use it, but you can't really um, create images out of it. So you just can create arrays with RGB values. Um, so at least I recommend NumPy and Pillow as minimal installation. So let me show you how this works. After uh, importing some stuff here, I will explain that in an instant live. You can create a so-called RGB image, and that's basically just a virtual frame buffer. So you have a, this, this frame buffer where you can put pixels in it. It's uh, internally, it's just a NumPy array, so, uh, or, or a Python array, if you don't have NumPy. And then um, you can put the pixels in there. You could also do that manually. You could get this array and do your stuff with, with NumPy, for example. Um, but that's not the primary goal, so there are some, some uh, functions or methods like draw point, draw circle, etc. And you can, you can uh, then draw your things. Um, internally, it's all done over vectors. So for colors, you have a, um, a three-dimensional vector with RGB values. Um, those are between 0 and 1. It's not between um, 0 and 255, so we, in theory we can have better quality than 8 bit per pixel. And uh, position is a two-dimensional vector, um, would be just a coordinate of, of our um, virtual frame buffer here. And then you just call image frame buffer or you just call image in Jupyter Notebook. And if you have pillow installed, you will see um, the image. So I could show this um, using um, this presentation, but I, I prefer to show you that um, live. So let's switch to Jupyter. Um, the source code will be, actually it is already a version there at the moment, but I will update if, if I do some changes in the code. So it will be located github.com uh, Martin Christen, EuroPython 2020. This link is also in the, in the room on Discord. So let me start it by showing you something. Um, I had uh, the link here from um, GitHub of the project. You can um, check this one. You can um, clone this one, for example. I, I did that. It's an alternative way. If you want to install it using pip, you can install that. Or you can just go to the source code, um, uh, clone this repository. Um, I already did that. I called it pirate, so I start, let me move this one. I start um, Jupyter Lab. I could also start a Jupyter Notebook, doesn't really matter. And so far this works. I will go not really to full screen, just uh, yeah, 125 person, that's okay. So um, inside there, you, you would see the source code of Pirate. Um, that's, that's here. So that's also if you want to develop something um, using Pirate. Um, you have, for example, um, the maths. Here you have the Vector3 class. And, and you also see um, the code here. And you can edit the code. And you could develop that. And at the end, you could, could make a pull request. And I, I would. Uh, maybe I would allow this one. Okay, the, the most important thing I have at the moment, no other dependencies, just nothing. <laughs> it's pure Python. So what I do is I just create again this virtual frame buffer. So um, 
I would just uh, import RGB image from the PyRT render and I import the VEC2 and VEC3 and I, I use the random module to, some, to draw some random points. So let me execute that one. For some reasons my keyboard wasn't working. Um, so uh, I create a virtual frame buffer. I do it rather small. You can do what you want here. Um, I create an RGB image um, 320 to 40. That's a really small resolution. I clear it with black. No, not really black, but I could do completely black, for example. And my, for some reasons, I messed up my keyboard. I uh, have to manually execute that. Okay. So what I do now here is I, I do a for loop in the range of 5000 and I draw my points at the position and color and the position is as I said before just a random integer between zero and um, the width and also a random integer between zero and the height. This minus one of course is because we have one too much from zero to you know that. Uh, and color is a random value RGB between zero and one each component. So we have completely random colors. So I executed that already. And then with image frame buffer, I can display that in the Jupyter notebook. And hopefully you can see that um, and uh, see all the points in different colors. So if you don't see that, I could actually um, increase the point size here and you see more points now with bigger, bigger size. So I have here some message from Zoom. Okay, that was probably the reason why my keyboard is not working. So now it should go again. Perfect. So, okay. So um, what I do now is I I draw some lines. Um, I uh, do a range 0 to 100 and oh, it's still not working, but it doesn't matter. And you see a live update now. Um, you see the, the lines are drawn over this image before. This is working because I created this, this frame buffer before and um, I can use it again. So if I create one frame buffer, it's, it's reusable. Um, and you can you can draw your things inside. Of course, if you want, if I want to create more frame buffer, I can do that too. And then I have to give each frame buffer a name. So I don't draw to this one; I draw to another one. I will show that in an instant. I also um, have to set update, uh, and I can specify uh, recommended um, frames per second, the number of frames per second. You see here I have some debug output. We see it was almost a 30. Um, it's not possible to have this exactly for um, obvious reasons. But um, by the way, this doesn't work on Firefox at the moment. That's a known bug. Um, I will fix that at one point. At the moment, I recommend using Chrome. So I can also load images. I have some images in, in uh, this folder here, a world map. Um, I can show that quickly here in data. I have some a world map and that's just a JPEG of the world from Natural Earth. It's a public domain data set, so I don't even have to say from where it is, but I just said it, so no problem. And now you see I create a frame buffer with a name world. And from now on, if I want to update that, I have to tell, okay, update the frame buffer world. And I do just for fun, I, I draw a circle here. And we see in the middle, um, 300, 150, there is a circle. I could also um, create some, some random circles, 100. So we see this, this is actually working and we see these random circles. So don't worry, I will not create a COVID map. We saw enough of those. So I decided, decided to um, download uh, earthquake data from the USGS. So that's actually a GeoJSON file um, on the server. And here it's, it's explained what it is. There are tons of metadata inside. And the most important part is the geometry, of course where you have the longitude, latitude and depth, but we are in 2D, so I don't really care about the elevation 
of this event and the magnitude of the earthquake. So if it's earthquake seven, that would be not, not very nice to see. So let's see what's that's actually live. I didn't check it um, this morning, so I don't really know what will happen if there was a er bigger earthquake or not. I will download your all earthquake data um, from the last two and a half weeks. I download that as a file called earthquakes geojson. So let me do that. So there should be a file now um, earthquakes geojson. So that worked. And I load it as JSON. This is basic Python. And then I load the image again and I go through this JSON file and I get all the coordinates out of it and I convert the longitude and latitude to pixels. That's done here with using the coordinate and converting it to, to simple pixels in the range zero to uh, the width and height. And then if the magnitude is bigger than 4.5, I draw it um, draw a circle. I could um, reduce that to two, but I don't really want too many um, earthquakes because there are many small earthquakes uh, happening. And at the end, I display this image. So let's just do that. And we see here are the um, earthquakes of the past two and a half weeks. Of course, um, it's not really a nice uh, graphic. You can't really uh, use the mouse pointer and get more information like this. It's really just a, a plot. Um, this one I could do uh, server side with, with Pi Pirate and, and do an update every hour, for example. That would already work. Okay, in the last talk, we, we heard a lot about procedural images. This is also one of my favorite topics. I will not explain anymore what's, what's noise. <laughs> um, we heard that in the last um, session. So let me just do a basic introduction to procedural graphics. Again, I create an, an RGB image. Um, the size is 256 by 256. Um, and then I, I um, create some stripes. Let me execute this first, then I, I can explain. You see the result is this one. And such stripes can be easily done using a modulo function. I have a modulo function in, in Pirate Insight. You all know with, with uh, Python, you can also do modulo using this percent operator. Um, I did this because this modulo function uses um, floats. Of course, Python supports floats too, but you can easily mess up if you don't really use floats, etc. And I, I did it for readability. So it, if you prefer this syntax, it's fine. I, I prefer this one. I can read this better. I don't know why. Um, I, I just don't like this um, syntax. And this one is better portable to other languages such as C++. So um, this modulo um, and this 0 0.5, let me do a 0 0.25 just to show you the difference. You see this one influences the, the width of, of this um, uh, uh, lines. And if I make uh, 0 0.5, I have even black and white and black and white. I could of course do other colors. I just uh, set this to, to black or to white like this. Um, yeah. So I can do the other thing. I can use Y instead of X and then it would just look like that. So you have uh, horizontal lines here. And now the big question is how can we combine that? If I want to make a checkerboard eight by eight, so like this and this, no, it's not and, it's a XOR. So we do the same and I do the module operation here for the, for the uh, for vertical and horizontal lines. And in between is an XOR. So if I execute that, you see it's really a checkerboard starting with white, black, white, black, and so on. And this already starts XOR. Um, this is a perfect way to explain XOR. If I do, by the way, I never understand why Python doesn't have this one, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, I do an OR and you see if I do a regular OR, you see um, I, I get this pattern because it's this or this. So it's it's that. If, if I make an AND, for example, you see the, the solution is of course just the combination of, of the two, so where the two uh, lines um, collide. So that's the, the XOR. 
Um, and we see here we have the checkerboard. So that's, that's an easy way to understand XOR in a graphical way. So I'm running out of time as expected. It doesn't matter. I create quickly a Mandelbrot image. Um, the, the formula for the Mandelbrot you can find anywhere, for example, on Wikipedia or whatever. And it's a really simple um, algorithm. You just have to implement this part basically. And you have to, to um, here, this one means that I convert the, the pixels to, to a number. So zero, zero is in the middle and it, it goes uh, from, from zero to one and, and, and so on. So that's just a conversion. And then I put the result of this while loop to, to the image. So we see, um, the, nothing happened because this is just the, the function. Now I time it and I create this Mandelbrot image and um, we see this took 1.5 seconds to, to um, display, uh, to create and display it. So uh, that's okay. I remember my first Mandelbrot was a little bit smaller than this, took about um, three to four minutes on a Commodore Amiga, end of the 80s. So this is still too slow. So uh, <laughs> so uh, we could use Numba, for example, to speed it up. So I just use Numba, make JIT, do the same uh, here. We see, of course, this while loop, we will not be able to break down, but of course we can, we can still try what happens. So uh, I execute that one. And then let's time it. We remember before it took 1.5 seconds and now it takes 686 milliseconds. So I execute it again. We see now it only takes, uh, we, we only have 22. The problem is we have to compile it one time and the second time we execute it, it's really fast. So we are at 21 seconds and so on. We can also do noise, um, uh, simplex noise, for example. I will go to, through this a little bit fast. We saw that in the previous talk, you can really create um, many nice things using, using these um, simplex noise or noise functions like the purling noise. But one thing I want to mention before I stop for the questions, you can also create movies using MoviePy. Um, let me just quickly explain that there is a, a, a function um, called, for example, make frame, just a function, you can name it like you want, but in there, there's a time and then you draw something and time should be a function of that. So I draw just a, draw a circle and I use time to, to use the radius of the circle. So I do that and now in background it creates this GIF. And if I display that, we see this animation. So I can even create animations in the Jupyter Notebook quite simple. But one last thing, I do this quickly, um, is the ray tracing part. You can create scenes, you can create um, some things. And now I start rendering this. This is really pure Python. It takes about 10 seconds. Um, and then it, it should be, finished, maybe because Zoom runs, it takes my CPU power. I see my CPU runs at 30% at the moment. So it took me 12 seconds to create this image here. And um, this is really pure Python. We, we also tried this to, to accelerate this and you can actually, we used FireGL in background and we had this in, in less than a, a we can display this in real time actually using these things. But I want to keep um, Pirate at the moment um, pure Python. Okay, so thank you very much. And um, I'm ready for questions if the time still is sufficient. So I don't see any questions in the Q&A uh, of, the, of the webinar. But I have a question. Is, is it possible to, to run this uh, as part of a web server as well? Because you, you just focus on the, on the um, notebooks. But let's say you want to dynamically generate a, a GIF or maybe you want to write a bot for Discord, let's say, and you want to produce GIFs that are animated. Would that work? Yes, of course. You just have to just uh, skip this one. <laughs> this is, of course, this only runs in, in Jupyter. 
But um, mm -hmm. for example, um, if you write something, uh, actually you have what you what you get out from Pirate. If you have NumPy installed, you get a NumPy array, RGB array. So let me show that quickly. Um, this is not the best example, but I do it anyways. So um, oh here plus. So I do image data. Actually, I should execute that quickly because, um, and you see this one is just a NumPy array filled with RGB values. It's a uint8, so it's it's 8 bit per pixel. Now it's all black because um, yeah, the most things are black at the corner. Um, so that's, you can, you can just save, you can save that. And this is really doable on a server. You can create a service. You don't need a GUI for anything. This is just for, let me say, debug purposes to display this image in Jupyter Notebook. So you could create um, anything on a, on a web server. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Then uh, we have two more questions. I think we can take uh, at least one. So first question is, do you need a GPU for ray tracing? No, in the in the current version, which is on GitHub, we we don't have that. Um, we did it this in a project. Um, we used um, the Open from AMD. There is some some uh, toolkit called um, um, Open Fire or something, and and they have a, a ray tracing engine on on GPU. And we use that, but the problem is we have then 1000 dependencies and we have, for example, on Windows, we have two DLLs on, on Mac. We have diff for each system, we have a different one and it's really, uh, really, really messy. So we never released that in, in GitHub. And for now it's just pure Python and we don't use any dependencies. So at the moment it's CPU only, this version. Okay, thank you very much. So there, uh, there's one more question, but I would uh, like to defer that to the talk channel. And so let's have your applause. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much. And now we're going to have a message from our sponsor.